Hi, I'm Phil Constantine, and on today's episode of Travels with Phil, we are going to the singing, booming, droning Kelso Sand Dunes. Now, they are located in the Mojave Desert. You can see them there with the little red marker in the center in Eastern California. We're going to show you how they are located here and what kind of geography you're in, starting in Los Angeles, heading out to the Mojave, and there they are, the Kelso Sand Dunes. So let's go out there and see them. This is the, this is Kel Baker Road. The Mojave Desert, Mojave National Preserve, I think it's called. She you some idea of the surrounding terrain. This is Eastern California, just off the tip of Nevada, Arizona. This would be Arizona in that direction. On the other side of the mountains are right around the edge. That'd be close to the Colorado River there, those mountain peaks. Kelso Dunes. I've heard of them. Don't know much about them. Normally I do research before I go someplace, but I just happen to drive by this place. You go down about a three mile road, and it's a dirt road, and uh, you don't necessarily need four wheel drive or high uh, vehicle clearance, but it, you know, it, it helps, it's nice. And once you get out there, it's about a three and a half mile round trip hike. Now you go through sand almost the entire distance out there. And while there's uh, lots of scrub and stuff like that, it is mostly sand. So for some folks, walking through sand is harder than climbing. Now you see some tracks out there from the various critters that are around. Now the park itself is about 45 square miles. Now this is deceiving here, this picture, because there's a 600 foot elevation gain going up to the highest point and roughly two steps forward and one step back. So it could take you as long as two to three hours to do the hike itself. And these uh, folks up on top of the uh, sand dune can give you an idea of uh, how really tall this is. So I had a little camera malfunction. So I have been very lucky and some folks have let me use some of their videos. And so this is not me standing on top of it and I do not have a drone. Now, as you walk through, you'll see it's very, very interesting looking sand and feeling sand. A lot of folks have said that the top is very hot and it's cold once you step in. I also noticed this over at Coral Pink Sand Dunes in Utah, which is sort of surprising. You know, you expect it to be hot all the way through, but it can actually be quite cold uh, underneath about the top surface inch. And it's that special sand that leads to the booming situations. Now, this area was, uh, well, well, let's just say it was a, a shallow lakes in the area and after they dried up the remains blew in the wind and uh, the dunes started being accumulated between about 2400 and 9000 years ago and built up here and it's about 45 square miles and because of the way the mountains are stretched out here and circled around uh, they the winds come through usually in the same kind of patterns and they just form eddies and the sand gets dropped out here and these are uh, wind-blown sand so they're called aeolian dunes and it's, uh, you know, the, the dunes can move a little bit back and forth. Uh, for those of you who don't know more, it's sand dunes. They do uh, shift a little bit, and this goes about 30, 40 feet from side to side at times. Now, these are known as booming sands. Now, there's only about seven places in America where they have them, and that's because of the strange way, if you get on a really steep slope, that there's a certain, uh, it's hard to explain, there's a certain layering to them. And then when the top layer starts to move, the bottom layers, uh, will echo or boom. To me, it sounded like the motor of, uh, of a prop-driven airplane. I spent a lot of time when I was in my last job on television working at an airport in a helicopter, and I've heard a lot of propellers. So, and that's what it really reminds me of. But I'll, sh I'll play you some of this in a little bit here. This is what it's like as you get up to the top. Now, a lot of people do take their shoes off, uh, even hiking in the lower elevations out there because it just feels better and you get sometimes a better traction and you don't have to worry about all the sand getting in your shoes and feeling bad. Now, this is a drone uh, from Randy Sauer, and you'll see the names over in the corners when I borrowed uh, videos from folks with their permissions, of course. And uh, he flew over this in a uh, fixed aircraft. This was not one of those four prop uh, drones that are very common nowadays. And actually, technically, since this is now part of the national park system, the drones are no longer allowed out there legally. But this gives you an idea. The sands can be somewhat fluid. And uh, listen in. That boom. Yeah.
booming sands. Causing a landslide or a sand slide is, leads to it. Now that was actually happening. That was not some trick uh, from the recording or some, you know, aberration from just the whatever kind of equipment he was using. That's the real sounds that they can make if you're on a steep slope that really hasn't been stepped on recently. So you take it back down and go back out to the uh, the trailhead, and it can be very hot. The best time to do this, the booming sounds are in the summer, so it gets up above 110 at times out there. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please feel free to make comments below as long as the language is family friendly. And if you like this video, please click on the thumbs up button below. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the circle with my picture in it in the lower right hand corner of the video. The arrow is pointing at it now. And once you have subscribed, you can be notified of when I have a new video posted by clicking on the bell icon in the description field below the video. Thanks again for watching.